Welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing $2,000 monthly checks for the low income and how this is by far the best approach. That's the focus of the video so let's get into it and talk through all the details. A new study was just released and this is actually really good. The study shows that sending out ongoing $2,000 monthly checks specifically focused on the low income is the best approach going forward, and this would actually have the best effect as well. I want to share with you the details of this study and exactly what they found because, yes, I actually agree with what they're talking about here. Sending out these ongoing $2,000 monthly checks only for the low income, not everybody else, just the low income, is a very, very good approach. So again, I want to share with you all the details of this report so you can see exactly what is going on here. I'd love to hear your feedback down below in the comment section. Do you agree with what this is also saying? I'll give you those details here in just a second, so let's jump into it and talk about what is going on in this report. However, really fast before we do, thanks so much for joining me. If you have not done so yet, can I ask a huge, huge favor of you? Will you please make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button right down below the video? Again, only if you haven't done so yet, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. I'm watching all the details, watching the headlines, doing all the research, advocating on your behalf, and doing anything I possibly can for you right now. I know it's a rough time financially. Everybody needs more money, that is no surprise, that is no secret. We all recognize this, right? Everybody needs a lot more cash right now. It's been tough. The last couple of years have been really, really tough, especially for the low income and fixed income. Again, you've heard me talk about it before in all the videos. Yeah, we talk about all of it, it's a tough time out there. So anyway, I'm here for you no matter what, every single day, doing all the research, watching everything out there very closely, and pointing out anything you can possibly grab or take advantage of. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below, and also feel free to share this video with your friends on social media again with the share button right down below. Alright, thank you so much, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and let's talk about the details of this study, this report, and what I want to bring to your attention here in this video. Alright, so first off, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Do you think they should send out $2,000 ongoing monthly checks for everybody or a massive percentage of our population, like, I don't know, 85% of our population? I'm going to say this much, I don't agree with that. Again, a lot of people need money right now, but not 85% of the population. I do not agree. I don't think a huge percent of the population should get checks. However, sending out ongoing monthly checks for a very specified group of people that I agree with. Now, here's the thing. Think back a couple of years ago, 2020. We got two checks then. Back in 2021, we got $1,400. A total of $3,200 that went out to 85% of the population. Do you think all 85% of the population needed that money? I'm going to go ahead and say this much. No, not even close. Did they want the money? Yes, absolutely they took it, right? We all took it. Everybody out there took it, but not everybody needed it, and that is what we saw with a lot of different issues that arose over the last couple of years. Way too much money going out to way too many people. However, this study actually finds that we don't need to do that next time around. We definitely do not need to do that. That was a major, major experiment, and they found that the experiment was not a very good approach, right? But here's what they're finding, sending out a very specified dollar amount. In this case, they used $2,000 in this study. Sending out $2,000 on an ongoing monthly basis for a specified period of time. And again, it could be two months, it could be three months, it could be five months. Something like this, a very short, specified period of time, but $2,000 for a very specified group of people. Again, low income. Now, here's what I want to point out really quickly. As they identify low income, this encompasses about 50 million, maybe 100 million people tops, that's it. Now again, think of it this way. How many people receive fixed income benefits as of right now? About 70 million people. How many people are living in poverty? About 40 million people. How many people are encompassed as low income? Well, it depends on where you draw the line as far as low income, but again, 50 to 100 million people would encompass about, I don't know, anywhere between about 20 to, say, 33% of our population. So it's very, very low percentages. 
considering we sent out checks to 85% of the population a couple of years ago. But here's what they found with this, and again, let me share with you the details of this study. Again, I agree with this, I think it's actually pretty good, which is why I said that earlier at the beginning of this video. So here's what it comes down to. They found that sending out checks to 85% of the population doesn't really work. It causes a whole bunch of issues like inflation, supply chain issues. It causes all kinds of issues for a very long time. But rather, sending out $2,000 on a monthly basis for a few months. Again, a few months being specified as anywhere between two and five months to anywhere between about 50 and maybe 100 million people at most, actually has a much higher effect. Now, let me share with you the details of what they found with this. They broke down different groups of people into three categories, and they identified it as MPC, marginal propensity to consume. That's what that means. So that's the very smart way of saying, if we give somebody money, how fast do they spend it? So they broke down these people into three categories. Okay, so they broke down these people into three categories, low MPC, medium MPC, and high MPC. Now let me share with you what they found. Someone with a low MPC is generally someone with a high income. These people are not what they want, so sorry high income people, you're out of here. We don't want you. What they found from this is that high income people have a low MPC. In other words, if you give a high-income person $2,000, what do they do with it? They're like a squirrel. They stash it away, hiding it away for the winter like a bunch of nuts, right? You get that? So, my point is they found that high-income people are not the ones they want for ongoing monthly checks or even checks of any kind because they don't do what's desired with this money. Remember the purpose of stimulus checks. What is the purpose of stimulus checks? So we can go out and buy a bunch of stuff we don't need? Well, maybe that could be the purpose, but no, the purpose of stimulus checks is actually to spend it. That's the purpose. A lot of people have this wrong idea, thinking, oh, we're supposed to save stimulus checks. No, we're not. Think of the idea here. Stimulus checks are for stimulating the economy. That's literally what they're for. That's why they're called EIP, Economic Impact Payments, because we're supposed to impact the economy with the payment. That's literally what they're for. It's not supposed to be saved, it's not supposed to be hoarded, it's not supposed to be invested, it's not supposed to be cashed out and put under your mattress, it's not supposed to be used to pay down bills, it's literally supposed to be used to go out to the stores and buy things. That's literally what they want us to do with it to stimulate the economy when the economy is down. Anyway, you've probably heard me talk about that before in other videos, so I don't need to elaborate on that too much. But they found that low MPC, or sorry, low MPC people are high income people that generally do not spend the money fast. If they do, it's a very small percentage of it, and they usually hoard it or pay down debt with it. Wrong answer. That's not what we want, right? We do not want these people to get $2,000 checks because they won't fulfill the purpose of the money, which is spending it. However, medium MPC people, what do we find with them? They spend a little bit, they do some dabbling around, they save a little, they invest a little, they pay down some debts, they spend a little. It's not really good and it's not really bad. Medium MPC people don't really accomplish what we want either. They don't fulfill the purpose of checks in the form of stimulus. They don't do it. So as a result, medium MPC people, again, sorry, you're not what we're looking for here. However, what they found is that people with a high MPC, bingo. Here's what we want. Let me explain the details of a high MPC person. Someone with a high MPC is actually someone who is generally low income or fixed income. What they found is that this person generally takes the money and spends 80% of it within 10 days. In other words, if someone were to get a $2,000 check and they are high MPC, the statistics show that they would spend 80% or what is that, $1,600 within, yeah, is that right? The statistics show that those with a high MPC would spend 80% or $1,600 of a $2,000 check within the first 10 days, with the remaining $400 spent over the following month. This is exactly what they want. The study continues to find that high MPC individuals, who are generally low income or on fixed incomes, are precisely the type of people they want to target. The study highlights that, during the stimulus check distributions between 2020 and 2021, nearly a trillion dollars was sent out to 85% of the population. 
As a result, we've been facing supply chain issues, massive inflation, and other economic challenges. While not all of these issues are solely attributed to the stimulus checks, they likely played a significant role. Going forward, the study suggests that instead of sending money to 85% of the population, focusing on ongoing, highly targeted $2,000 payments to high MPC individuals over a few months, perhaps two, three, four, or five months, would have a better effect. This approach would cost less, around $400 billion, which is less than half of what was spent earlier. By targeting 20% to 33% of the population, the same economic impact could be achieved. Stimulating the economy by spending money on goods and services rather than hoarding, saving, investing, or paying down debts and bills. Spending money in the economy to buy goods and services is stimulative, which is the desired outcome of these stimulus checks. The study emphasizes that sending out checks to a highly focused group of people, rather than a blanket distribution, would avoid the supply chain issues, supply and demand imbalances, and inflation that we've seen in recent years. This approach would not only stimulate the economy, but also support low-income individuals who need the money, especially as prices continue to rise. The report is enlightening and informative, and I agree with its conclusions. Sending checks to 85% of the population is not a good approach, as many of those recipients do not need the money. There's a big difference between need and want. So, while this approach might not be welcomed by everyone, it's important to recognize that not everyone may receive these targeted checks. As of now, no $2,000 ongoing monthly checks have been approved. However, this study provides a valuable insight into the potential effects of such payments in the future. In summary, the broad distribution of checks like those we saw a few years ago isn't a good approach. We've seen the negative consequences, such as too much money chasing too few goods and services, driving up prices and exacerbating supply and demand issues. This study suggests a more focused approach, which could avoid these problems in the future. I hope this helps you understand the study's findings. I found it very fascinating and wanted to share it with you. Who knows what will happen during the next major economic contraction or recession, but this study provides some valuable insights into what could be done differently. Please enjoy your day, and if you haven't already, please subscribe down below, it's totally free. Share the video using the share button below, and check out any of the other thousands of videos on the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.